Hi friends, so my husband and my son have been busy pulling up the grass and grass slash weeds that were here in the front yard and replaced it with they basically pulled it all up, sifted through all the stuff for any weed seeds, sifted that out and put the soil back down and smoothed it out, flattened it out, placed this placed a watering system underneath. My husband changed out the grass slash weeds down here, pulled them up, shook out all the weed seeds, and then placed some cardboard down and some mulch. Now I didn't want him to buy mulch, but they're not providing city mulch anymore for free, which really sucks. Um, that's kind of annoying. Um, they don't owe us anything, but I just thought our city was one of the great ones that did such a service. Now, my husband bought this Vigo garden bed. It's a really long one. I threw some seeds in here of various sorts, oopsie daisy calendula and n cherry rose nasturtium, um, asters, bonita top blend, tall max snapdragon, which is a perennial, sea star aster, lemon balm, Slow Bolt Cilantro, Tetra Dill, Parsley Italian Flat Leaf, White Whorehound, Summer Savory and Shrivel. So that's why it looks bare here because I just stuck the seeds in here and it almost looks like something stepped in here and there's fuzz. Yeah, I think something was in here. There's fuzz and like footprints. But at least it didn't scratch it, so that makes me happy. And we have a watering system in here. And then over here, I put some red sun sunflowers. And hopefully they'll pop up. And then those seedlings that I had, I transplanted a bunch of mizuna here which do really really well mizuna mustard some kailan which is a chinese broccoli that's mostly stem which i love and bok choys a ton of them and i thought there was one more variety hey internet people So these are those solar lights at night on the garden beds and it's really actually useful because it really lights it up. So we filled it with dirt and um, we're going to do the irrigation soon the, and then um, sow some seeds. So there's the other side with the lights and it kind of helps to illuminate our paths hi friends so it's been about a month since that other video where these were little tiny seedlings my kailan is starting to flower this is a good time to get it and it's kind of like a brassica where you can eat the stalks and the leaves and my cat's always doing great. This one's going to flower. My mizuna is going crazy. And the good thing about it is critters don't like mustards. So that's something great to grow. They don't like tatsoi, so I think they're not used to it. I harvested some already. 
And here's some chervil growing. I have yet to taste it. I popped a little piece in my mouth, but it's no different from parsley or cilantro. So this is this is dill, and that's cilantro, and that's one teeny tiny Italian parsley. For some reason, they didn't come up here. Here's another one, and then over here, it was supposed to be whorehound and summer savory. Nothing came up here, and here's a calendula. Um, Oopsie Daisy calendula, so it's going to be bright, orangey colored. Tall Snapdragon perennial. And this is Melissa lemon balm. So I'm going to make tea from that. Um, the Oriental Night Alyssum didn't come up, nor did my new um, nasturtiums. So we'll see. So that's one garden bed. I popped some ginger that I got from Melissa's Organic Ginger from Costco into the ground because they started to show some shoots. We'll see, um, not into the ground, into the pot. We'll see what happens. Um, we got a ton of rain, three days worth of rain, practically nonstop, and here in SoCal. So here my Cabernet onion bulbs are popping up and my chives. Everything else that I'm growing in here I will tell you in a minute, but nothing else grew and I divided it out with these sticks. And my husband made a heart-shaped bed out of that one. Um, what was supposed to connect to the other one, it's like 10 in one, you can convert it to different um, ways. So he made me two heart beds. Here's the other heart bed and I will also tell you in a moment what I grew. Or I could tell you now. So at the periphery, I grew a bunch of um, alliums. And then here I grew two rows of iceberg, and you can see them. That's two rows. Two rows of Paris, Paris Island lettuce. And a row of mesclun lettuce. And no, two rows of mesclun lettuce. One row of chijimisai, which are these right here. And one row of arugula astro rocket. And I'm going to try to harvest things from the center because I plan on growing a tomato up there, a pepper, and um, I threw a couple gem marigold seeds in here, but they did not pop up. But I plan on growing a tomato in the center and kind of like trellis it up. And I'm gonna kind of grow a bunch of tomatoes and peppers throughout, interplant, and hopefully the, um, the they don't get cross-pollinated, at least I hope not. And that way I can gather the seeds for the different varieties. My husband decided to put a one of the beds down there to encase our avocado tree and so we just kind of gather some leaves and threw it in there so it would break down and mulch the bed but I really wanted it as a separate bed to grow plants in but he wouldn't relinquish it to me because I want more growing space I want to grow more foods and not necessarily um, just have it as a ring around a, a a tree which to me makes no sense so over here we have another bed and it's L-shaped um, so I plan on growing some annuals all in the front so over here I have some zinnia so in the L-shaped bed I had already um, grown uh, the seedlings in little seedling pots of brassicas. So I have calabrese, broccoli, and all kinds of um, broccolis and cauliflowers that I planted over there. And um, I wanted it away from the walking path where people walk. Luckily it's elevated so it's not like a dog or a cat will really climb it to, to go do its business. So kind of have all my edibles kind of in the back. And then I have a row of uh, mums. 
here's one that's sprouting so it's going to be kind of a barrier between the edibles and the non-edibles and then in here I'm going to be growing a ton I already stuck the seeds in there there are going to be a ton of annuals of different varieties so I grew some Topolino sunflowers. They're short sunflowers and they have multiple flowers per stem. So that's what I wanted. So what I plan to do, and I did it already, is I put the shorter flowers in the front and then followed by a little bit taller, followed by a little bit taller, and then the mums behind it to separate my edibles from my non-edibles. And mums are great because they keep pests away really, really well. So over here, it's Topolino sunflowers. They're already sprouting. Uh, they've been in here for about a week and a half or two. Here's Apricot Cosmo. And then one little Ageratum Blue Planet. And some English Daisies. I'm kind of worried because the temperature is going to dip down this later this week and it has rained three days straight. And I heard on the news that we got six months worth of rain in those three days for SoCal. So that's unusual. Um, I tried to bank as much water into these beds as possible because um, we made a mistake when we stuck the um, soil underneath there and cardboard and other things. Um, you're supposed to water them. We, we put straw as well. You're supposed to water them so they can break down more easily and uh, my husband didn't do that and then he threw um, the good soil on top, the store-bought soil and then I planted the seeds so hopefully all this rain is just going to help you know go in there and I baked all the water in there as much as I could um, so hopefully it's going to not be it's not going to kill my seedlings um, because I guess they can, um, what do you call it, the seeds can decay or whatever you call it. There's a double click Cosmo, one, two, and three, and I have sprouting some Rubenza Cosmo, I love it. These are so cool. So they're going to be a dark purplish colored uh, blooms, but it's so weird that even the seeds were that purple burgundy color. It was gorgeous. And over here I have an African Kilimanjaro white marigolds. And over here are some Phyllis marigolds some American Legion pop puppies, some peony uh, puppies, double blooms, French marigold, red metamorph, so even the stem's kind of reddish if you can see that. Mazurkia zunias, uh, Mazurkia zinnias. So all my food items are back there, all my brassicas. And as we pan from that one to this L-shaped bed, because behind it is my tons of water and my avocado tree, but I'm growing brassicas and tatsoi here, and the same thing. I have a row of mums that are going to come up to divide my edibles such as these Tokyo Long Bunching Onions. So like I said, I threw some seeds in here that were I believe uh, marigolds and cosmos. Let's see, I should read them. So Tithonia and cosmos and red night marigolds and they didn't pop up. So I think I might have um, decayed the, the overwatered the seeds. So here's something that popped up. Of course, I don't have a label near it, so I don't know what it is. Dahlia Unwinds Mix. Um, 
So this is the dahlia, sure. You can see by that leaf right there. Nothing else here, even though I put in a chrysanthemum Robinson's mix. And then over here, I have tiny little seedlings, alyssum, snow, carpet of snow. And those are from the um, Dollar Tree. So Dollar Tree seeds are really good. They're actually very Morse seeds. Uh, they just make a, they just sell a cheaper, smaller amount in the Dollar Tree packets. So here is the Lilliput zinnias. I didn't know that they could grow this early. Otherwise, I would have grown them earlier. I th thought they were a hot season crop that needed to be sowed like later in the spring. Some Shirley single poppies. Some marigold orange Hawaii. some zinnias luminosa pink oh they're gonna be really gorgeous um, they say that asters are a cool season crop but I have not been able to grow those either so I don't know what is going on and seeing my other ester is not growing um, I believe this is a weed it looks like a weed so Celosia is not coming up. I believe that requires heat, so it's probably not ready to come up. Um, here is a row of Love in a Mist, Miss Jekyll, and Poppy, Hungarian Blue Bread Seed, which I plan on collecting the seeds for breads and uh, muffins. Lupin. These were the first to come up, guys. Very Morse Lupins. Excellent. I'm so happy. Some Burpee Royal Carpet Alyssum. I love the purple color. Or, uh, that might be the gold one. American Legion Poppy. Phyllis African Marigold, the same light colored ones. I hope they are the same color that Botanical Interest um, made them in the on the cover of the seed packet because I love that color. It was really pretty. Let's show you all the water I've been collecting. I gathered every single vessel and container I could possibly find to collect all the water, all the water. So, and I have a ton in the back. I have this rain barrel. I have a ton of troughs, and I've just been collecting as much as I can so that I don't have to water, but worry about paying for any water for the things that I grow. And at least that part I'll be taking care of for at least three quarters of the summer. Hi friends, so I got a delivery, and it's something that my husband ordered. And it's something, it's our latest project. Let me show you. So this was quite difficult to open. It was glued on real tight. So I managed to wrangle it off and let's open it. So Vigo has solar garden lights. And this is an eight pack. And it looks like that. And you attach it to your Vigo garden beds. So I loosened the tape that was here so it would be easier to open so I can show you. Let your garden light the way. I love that. That's really pretty. Beagle Garden Solar Garden Light. 
and it says to prevent harm to the environment and human health from waste disposal please separate this waste and recycle it responsibly at the end of its life so turn on and magnet to the garden bed so it has a ma magnet at the back so you don't have to screw on or off anything really simple love that charge eight hours in full sun lights up in the dark IP times four waterproof auto sensor solar powered to test the light cover the solar panel with your hands or hold it in the dark and it should illuminate if it does not let the light charge for five to six hours then test again quite interesting so here's how they look nicely packaged in paper and it doesn't knock around and break and stuff easily snugly secured in each individual slot and then they've got this little pouch adorable and let me try to get one out of there without damaging it Oops, <laughs> did exactly what I wasn't wanting to do. So these are really nice. They've got the clear plastic there. Pretty sure that's, yep, that's plastic. And then that must be the magnet. And some light bulbs down there. <gasps> oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Oh, so you, you hang it like this. So this is the top where the solar panel, the solar tuck, the light um, reaches the solar panel. And then I guess there's light coming from there, I'm guessing. So yeah, we'll test it out later in the dark when it's fully charged. So he ordered an eight pack here. Next we have this other huge box and let me just open it up to see this unboxing here. So if you order Vigo garden beds right now, they are 30% off, which is a really good deal. And if you buy enough of the products um, you qualify for the free gift so in the free gift you get this thing right here let me move things aside you get this thing that looks like a laundry basket and you open it up and it's basically a composting worm bin and you get a hoary hoary knife 10 in 1. Awesome. Room to grow. And then you get in here they've packaged something else. Let's see what's in there. Okay, so before I go on to the smaller green box, I wanted to show the compost um, composting worm bin. So you have all kinds of holes and then even small holes and you half bury this um, into the ground and um, you just stick your compost in there and over time um, the worms will crawl in and out and just um, you know decay the, the food products, the kitchen scraps and then and leaves and all kinds of stuff and you get nice soil nice compost from here and you could directly put it into your vigo bed to feed your vigo bed over time so that you always have something some kind of nice soil as you work at growing things you are also feeding it directly what I like about it is once it's buried it has this lid so you won't have flies and fruit flies flying around and all this 
part all of this gets submerged into the ground or in the soil and this is the only thing that brings air in there to circulate these smaller holes that vermin can't get into and um, I like how big this is this is like almost like the size of a laundry basket and I didn't have to make my own from a bucket which I know would be significantly cheaper but I wouldn't have to deal with like plastic in my yard and trying to like um, use the sandpaper to sand it down and whatnot it's like it's like really oops. I wouldn't have to use sandpaper or anything on these it's already nicely printed out for me so I love it Next is this Vigo Garden little locker thing and it opens quite easily and we'll see these items in a minute. Let me set them aside. <clears throat> I like how everything's inset into the other. So it has drainage holes and it has these hooks on the back side. Let me just turn it around these hooks here and it's meant to be hooked onto your Vigo garden bed from the outside so you hook it on the outside of your garden bed and it's a toolbox so you're supposed to put your shovel your spade your um, the little three-pronged hook uh, thing that helps to kill weeds or whatnot and to fluff up your soil you stick it in here and um, if it rains, it never saves, it never catches water because there are drainage holes. If ever any water gets in, so your tools don't get rusted out. So in that container were this two pack of Vigo Garden solar lights. So they're just like what I showed you the Vigo Garden solar lights from earlier. So, but this is a two pack as a gift versus the eight pack that my husband ordered because he ordered four Vigo Garden beds. And in this gift, there are these two that say organic and sustainable living for everyone. Let me open it up. So I couldn't open it with one hand, but let me show you what's in it. Really cool. Oh my goodness, I can't open it with one hand. Oh look, it's a cute little mug, Vigo Garden. And it's um, shaped like the Vigo Garden bed. <laughs> cute. Made in China, microwave and dishwasher safe. So they have one in that, it's a coffee mug, and one in this other color, which I think these are two of the colors that they offer. They also offer white, charcoal, gray, and I'm not sure what other colors. Very cute. So it came with this modular garden sifter multi-screen kit with different sizes of screen I'm guessing to screen to sift your soil and I love how they give you reasonable suggestions this box is fully compostable thanks for returning it to the earth to break down at the bottom of your garden bed which is so true because once you set up your garden bed um, you're gonna have to fill it with a lot a lot of soil and um, to prevent any weeds from growing through you can put the you can fill it up with cardboard at the bottom of your bed um, with quite a well, quite a bit of course so um, you could set this down there so let me open up this sifter modular garden sifter multi-screen kit wow I'm impressed it's made from this like stainless steel or something and it has ergonomic handles. Cap nuts are installed on the outside of the handle. 
14 and a half inches by 14 and a half inches by 3 and a point three inches. 100% stainless steel. Love it. It's more than I thought. I thought it was going to have a plastic outer. Sift the compost. Ensure only finest components, finished components, is spread into the garden. Sift mulch. Separate mulch to optimal sizes. Sift warm castings. Easily separate worms from castings to spread throughout your garden. Sift soil. Screen soil for their finer blends. So like whatever you compost, compost it in your worm bin, your composting worm bin, you can sift it out here. That's really cool. So the handle's in there. I've got to cut that out. But here's the smaller um, dimension, smaller holes on this sifter. And then on this side is are the bigger holes. So this is for the mulch and the other one was for the soil. So we'll set that up later. And there's this Vigo garden um, gardening bag. And it's actually really nice. I've had this before with made of cloth. And this is actually made of like a rubberized, very strong and durable um, bag that you can put your tools in here, you can put other things in here, your harvest even, and it has um, handles right here um, for like a tote. And it even has handles, oh my goodness. It even has handles on the bottom. So like if you have to lift it, cause it's heavy. Oh my goodness, this is really good quality. So down here it says Vigo garden and down here is really sturdy too it is a really good bag and on both sides there are pockets so in the front and the back really really nice love it Vigo really thought of everything because look at all the things that they gave as a gift that's worth over $400 worth of items for buying the beds. And it's just to encourage you to garden and to make things easier. And they included this. This is what I wanted so badly a year ago. I saw other gardeners um, using the Hori Hori and um, I didn't like how my spade would go missing or it would break at the handle right at the neck because I had some cheap some cheap ones and um, also it's supposedly very multifunctional let me open this up oh I love it it says 10 in one use so let's read it it says serrated blade yes so you can cut stems you don't have to go find a different tool like a a uh, pruner or whatnot for for cutting like thick stems of vegetables it has a ruler so you can see the depth that you want to grow um, your bulbs and other plants awesome flat blade on on the other side um, a shovel so yeah you can use it to scoop things nail puller oh I didn't know it has a hole there so it's a nail puller M4 wrench, M5 wrench, M6 wrench, M8 wrench, bottle opener. <laughs> that makes sense because when you're working in the garden, sometimes you get thirsty. And it's ergonomic textured plastic handle. So let's open it up and see. And I love that it comes with a sheath. So it comes with something and you just attach it to your tool belt or your garden bag. Love it. Let's see. I love that. So you don't accidentally cut yourself or, or something, stab yourself. Let's see. Oh yeah, this is very durable, this outer. And it's flexible. And it has the snaps. Okay, here we go. Okay. So there we have it. Ooh, it looks very sturdy. Very strong. It's bent like that, curved like that. So you can shovel things, but it, at the same time, 
you can cut things and you can cut things so that's good because when I harvest some vegetables it irks me that I have to go and then find a pruning shear or when I'm digging something and suddenly I need to have a different function of cutting something then I have to go find like three different tools and this is multiple tools in one love it So over here, when I opened it, it's nice. It's a durable inside that you can wipe down and clean as well. It has a place for a small coffee cup and a big coffee cup if you want to. These straps right here, that's a big one and that's the small one. And then it has space for other things. And then in here are two clips that can clip onto the side of your garden bed so while you work you can grab your tools and and do what whatever you want and this will be it'll be attached to your garden bed so you don't lose it and you can just easily put things into the the pockets as you need them and it has a magnetic thing in here to store these clips let me get it. Can't do it with one hand. Let me see if I could get it out. Yes, so these are these are magnetic. So I can cling to your garden bed.